I'm joined now by NBC News' investigations correspondent, Tom Winter, and I've also got defense attorney and NBC News legal analyst, Danny Savalos, here. So, Tom, let's lay this out. Mm -hmm. She files this civil lawsuit. So, it, and it, in some ways, this is about defrauding the state and city. Correct. Of tax money. Okay? Correct. So, I guess my first question is, is there not a criminal statute in the state code that she could have charged Trump and the Trump organization with? Well, there is. I mean, from a criminal perspective, most criminal charges have to be brought uh, by a district attorney. The attorney general in the state of New York, and, and each attorney general, depending upon the state, is, is mm -hmm. different, uh, is typically more of, a, of an office to file civil action. So one, the f this fits more in her purview. But two, to your point, when you bring the type of criminal charges that you might need to bring here, you have to establish intent in all sorts of other different things at the criminal level to meet the criminal criminal bar, which is higher than a civil suit, of course. And so I think there's a calculus that maybe this was the best path forward based on the information that they found. Also, the, the best path forward when you consider the Attorney General of New York, Letitia James, you, me, anybody mm -hmm. else, that what is the best lane for them to be in on this type of uh, this type of case? And this appears to be the best lane for them to be in on this type of case. And of course, this office, not led by James, but led by others, has had uh, other civil suits against uh, Trump, his foundation, the mm -hmm. university in the past. Uh, they've had settlements in those instances. So uh, I think you've seen an office that at least has, has done this dance before. Let me ask you uh, this. There is a Alvin Bragg, uh, who is the DA in Manhattan, Correct. Uh, in New York City. He came out and after her announcement said, hey, we're still investigating uh, a crime, a potential crime here. Right. They still have a criminal investigation going on. Um, if that was the case, why wouldn't she wait to see where that goes? I... It is true that he still has an ongoing criminal mm -hmm. investigation. We've seen no signs of any sort of investigative efforts for the last six months, mm -hmm. and I asked him about that. Interesting. And I asked him about that after the Alan Weissel guilty plea. Now, we had heard continuously uh, in a prior office uh, just from people that had been brought before the grand jury themselves. I mean, their attorney, own attorneys would put out public statements, mm -hmm. so I, I'm not giving up any sources here. If an attorney mm -hmm. says, yeah, I put my client before the grand jury, and, yeah. and they were asked questions about X, Y, and Z, well, that's an on-the-record statement. So. We knew about steps that were being taken then. We have not heard about any steps that have been taken since the early part of this year. There's no grand jury that we're aware of that's listening to any sort of evidence. So I think they don't want to necessarily close out this case when they still have Alan Weisselberg yet to testify mm -hmm. against the Trump organization. He still has to yeah. report to prison. Rikers is a terrible place to be when it's running well. It's not running well now. He's going to be there during the winter time. I don't think he wants to quite close the book and, and put it away in the deep mm -hmm. filing cabinet just yet. On the other hand, I think for the AG's office, they had already taken Trump's deposition. That was really the end of it. Think of like the Hillary Clinton yeah. investigation, the email server investigation. The FBI got her statement at that point. Shortly thereafter, they knew what they had yeah. or what they didn't have. And so I think this was the natural ending point. Danny Savalos, how strong is uh, the civil case? It's strong, and here's why. Number one, there are going to be a lot of receipts. In other words, there's going to be a lot of evidence because these are docu this is a document-heavy case. In other words, when Trump et al. Uh, re uh, represented to banks and insurers that they had X amount in assets, that's going to be on a piece of paper. Uh, now, on the Trump side, their defense will surely be uh, two-pronged. Number one, this is all political, but that isn't really a defense in court. So the real defense in court is going to be, look, valuation of property is subjective. And by the way, it's especially subjective when Trump is involved because Trump will argue that just putting his name in big coming attraction marquee letters on the front of a building can change the valuation of a building. That's a defense that is interesting in most cases, but in this case, at least yeah. according to the allegations in the complaint, multiplying valuation by tens, dozens of times, or taking 10,000 square feet of an apartment and yeah. saying it's 30,000 square feet, these numbers are dizzying to the average juror, even though at its core, this is a basic, I inflated my value to get more favorable terms on but a loan Danny, or insurance. Isn't it, yeah. Isn't it worse than that, though? He inflates it when he wants it inflated, and then they deflate it when they want it. I mean, isn't that where this becomes almost open and shut? If he were always inflating, then the Trump branding argument makes sense to me. But then explain if the deflation. If true, this scheme is really one of the oldest schemes in the book. You inflate your value when you want to impress and ruffle your feathers for the mortgage companies and the people who want to give you money so you show you're not a risk. 
But, Chuck, when the tax man cometh, oh, we have no money in our coffers. It's going to be a cold winter. This has been going on since business, uh, since right. the tax code started. It just doesn't go on at this level. And while the numbers, the millions and billions of dollars and the thousands of square feet may be dizzying to the average person, at their core, Letitia James is counting on a, a jury that's going to get this case at its core. They may not have tens of thousands of square feet right. in a New York studio apartment, but they're going to get the idea that we've all... To, to those people who have applied for a mortgage, we all would love to show the mortgage company that we have a lot more money than we do. But we can't do it because it's illegal. Uh, Tom, the referral of the SDNY. Right. Some of these things, is there a statute of limitations on some of these criminal charges? Because um, I remember there was some thought that there might be on the criminal front. Right. So one of the things that's contained in today's filings is that some of the uh, things that you've just been talking about with Danny, uh, the inflation or underinflation, have been going on up until 2020 when Trump was under investigation, when he knew he was under investigation. So this would mean Eric and Jr. or maybe in act, they might be the ones in more criminal um, more in the criminal line of fire here, right? Potentially, and I think that's a really smart point. So, yeah, from a statute of limitations concern, certainly five years could be the case. But then when you bring in conspiracy, which is essentially what James has done here mm -hmm. today, she's not just going for the last couple of years. She's gone back 10 years and looking at this. I think that's a, that's, a, that's a potential avenue for federal prosecutors to get around that issue. Would you be surprised if SDNY took a pass on this one? This feels like this is in their wheelhouse. They love these financial oh, cases. I, 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 don't, I don't think there's any chance they take a pass at it, whether or not they think that it rises to the bar. Yeah. And there's obviously a ton of evidence, even though it's a 220-page filing, there's a lot of evidence we're not yet seeing. They're going to definitely need to look at this, where that goes You assume goes they open there, a we'll case, see. whether they... End up indictments, final, that's a long way away, but you, they will open a case. 100%. I don't right. see there's a way out of that. Tom Winter, Danny Savalos. <laughs> Another day, again, you got to get your scorecard. Which investigation are we talking about? This one is Trump Org and New York. Uh, we will be talking about the other ones a bit later. Thank you both. Bo Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.